The spirit world knows what's coming. There are some subject matters in the Bible that should be taught, but not experienced, and this is one of them. But you will rarely find a sermon preached on the wrath of God. All we hear in today's pulpits is 10 ways to be blessed, 5 steps to your breakthrough, 6 keys to be an overcomer, but rarely do you hear a sermon on the wrath of God. The wrath of God is something you want to learn about and not experience. There is no one that can stand the wrath of God. At the reality of God's wrath, even his angels quake before him. Let us begin with this point. If you choose to disobey God, and if you choose to disobey the laws he has set in his own universe, you will face the consequences, and that is the wrath of God. And the laws he has given us in his holy word reflect his holy character. This is God's universe. He spoke it into existence. This is God's universe, and he is the one who holds it all together. This is God's universe, and he will one day destroy it to create a new heaven and a new earth. This is God's universe, and he will one day judge it. God does not tolerate sin on any level. God will always judge sin. He never lets it slide. He never gives you a free pass. God will always judge sin. The issue of sin is such a big one that it required God to give his begotten son to deal with it. Sin is no laughing matter. And if you don't, repent and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will be a recipient of the wrath of God. Romans 1 verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Notice the choice of words. The wrath of God is revealed against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. Not some, but all. All sin will be judged. None of us want to experience the wrath of God that is coming, so it is better for you and I to learn from those who have experienced it. Adam and Eve Genesis 2 verse 16 and 17 and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Our first parents found themselves in Utopia, they did not have to toil or labor hard to have anything. All that God assigned them to do was to keep the garden and to maintain what he had provided for their comfort. However, God gave them an instruction not to eat from a particular tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and of evil, and also told them the consequence of disobedience is death. What did they do? They went right over to the tree and ate it. They disobeyed God's instructions, and they both were sent out of the presence of God because they chose disobedience in place of submission to God's will. Consequently, Genesis 3 verse 23 and 24 says, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. An angel with a flaming sword had to be assigned by God to guard the Garden of Eden from the intrusion of mankind. There is no tenable excuse that anyone would present a just cause to sin or act in disobedience against God's instructions. 
Disobedience has a lot of consequences, ultimately attracts the divine wrath of God. Every negative situation experienced by every human was because of this act of disobedience. Every war, every conflict, every fight, every heartbreak, every accident, every funeral, every cemetery, every graveyard, every casket, every hospital bed, every chronic disease, every tear, every illness, every divorce, every pain, every trauma, every rejection, everything negative that has ever happened in everyone's life can be traced back to this one act of disobedience that demanded the wrath of God. Even until now we have not been totally free from the consequence of the choice of Adam and Eve the consequences of your choices could outlive you. Therefore, be careful of the decisions you make. The Generation of Noah Genesis 6 verse 13 and 14 And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and, behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. The generation of Noah teaches us that a nation or a set of people can jointly choose to incur God's wrath, just the same way an individual can provoke God's wrath. God had told Noah about his plan to destroy the world, having seen the growing wickedness of humans on the surface of the earth. I have learned that God will never punish sinners without first of all making a route of escape for them. Noah preached righteousness for over a century and warned the people about the coming flood. But no one cared to listen to him. They mocked him because he was sounding senseless. Rain had never fallen in that generation, so a flood was unimaginable. It was hard for people to believe that there would be a flood. This is the same way people mock ministers of the gospel in our generation who preach about the rapture and the second advent of Christ. A lot of people find it hard to accept that there could be such a thing as rapture because it has never happened before. Except in the case of Enoch, such people fail to acknowledge that God is mysterious, that a thing that has never happened before does not mean it can never happen at all. The generation of Noah that disbelieved the possibility of a flood didn't stop the flood from taking them unaware. It came in a time they never expected. They had the opportunity to get into the ark and become safe from the flood but they chose to turn deaf ears to the words of Noah. They could not blame God for being heartless. They only had themselves to blame, for being unwise in their decisions because they all had the choice to get into the ark. And oh, the flood came. Imagine how they felt when they heard thunder roar and the lightning flash. And that first drop of rain came they all thought of Noah as the floodgates of heaven poured. And as water began to pour out of the ground and they tried to swim as fast as they could, they climbed mountains trying to get to higher ground. The day the flood came they were all caught unaware. This is the same way Christ will show up one day and people will be caught unaware. Sodom and Gomorrah 2 Peter 2 verse 4 to 6 For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow. 
making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. Archaeologists till this day cannot find the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because God poured out his wrath on the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Even angels are not exempt from the wrath of God. Second Peter 2 For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into change of darkness. And we see the prophecy that is in the book of Revelation, the prophecy of the wrath of God, where all of heaven will be silent for thirty minutes. Imagine that every angel, Gabriel, will be silent, Michael will be silent, complete and utter silence. And in Revelation 8, the seventh seal is open, and something strange happens. This is the only time recorded in the Bible where this will happen. All heaven will be in silence for about half an hour, complete and utter silence. O oh, the innumerable number of angels, and the saints of God that are now in heaven, will all be silent for half an hour. Why? Because the trumpets are about sounded upon earth, and for thirty minutes all of heaven is silent. And then finally, Revelation 8 verse 2 to 6 reads, And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, with the prayers of the saints, ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. And then we see the trumpets being blown. The first trumpet caused the vegetation to be struck, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. The second trumpet caused the seas to be struck. John saw the second angel sounding his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. The third trumpet caused the waters to be struck. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. Then the fourth trumpet, the heaven struck. Revelation 9 verse 12 reads, Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Then the fifth trumpet Apollyon the destroyer was released. No wonder heaven was silent for half an hour. What happens after the seventh seal is opened is something you do not want to experience. Don't be like the generation of Noah. The choice of divine wrath. People can choose divine wrath, 
This we do each time we consciously and deliberately disobey or act in defiance against God's will. The wrath of God is always associated with the choices we make. Revelation 3 verse 20 says that Christ stands at the door of our hearts knocking, only to enter in the hearts of those who choose to open to Him. He will never force Himself on anyone. It is demons that uses force. God doesn't. If it has happened once, it will happen again. 